What's up guys? I'm so glad you guys could join me for Rates of Reaction. Today we're going to be covering any possible way you need to answer these questions in your exam. And this is going to go from the basics all the way down to the proper theory. So let's see what we need to do to answer any question on Rate of Reaction. Firstly, we're going to be considering collision theory. How is a reaction made? What is an effective collision? And then from there we're going to build our model to answer any question related to Rates of Reaction. So are you with me? Well, I'm following this, you follow along with me, and we'll get it done. So, basic collisions. What do they need to happen? Firstly, you need a particle A. Secondly, you need particle B. And, and thirdly, you need a collision. So let's see what happens when A and B collide. O, C, and out of nowhere, we now have a new molecule. So, let's keep in mind that that was A plus B to give us C. Let's quickly look at a bigger, wider example and see what it causes an effective collision. So, top right of our screen, we have A plus B goes to C. So, let's have a massive explosion of them within a small substrate. Let's take a quick analogy here to make it a little bit more intuitive for us to understand. We'll take this as a huge party floor. Everybody's dancing, the A's being the girls, B being the guys. Or, if you want to remember, A being girls, B for boys. As you go. In any case, here on the top left of the screen, a girl and a guy meet up on the dance floor, and let's see what happens. Oh, unfortunately, nothing came out of it. Maybe the guy just had a bit of a bad breath. Nothing really he could do, but he was just wasn't the collision for him. So, but further down to the right of that dance floor, we have another one coming forward. Let's see what happens with these two. Boom, C, couple made. In this case here, the guy must have brushed his teeth, made sure he had all the moves and he was ready to go. And there we suddenly have a collision that worked. So, what made this an effective collision? I'm so glad you've asked that, because that's exactly what we need to answer. Firstly, we need to make sure they had enough speed. Well, what does that mean? Well, they had to have sufficient kinetic energy. They had to collide with enough energy to break their bonds and form new ones. So, what is the second part of this? Because remember, these were humans we were talking about, and they're really complex creatures. So we can't just throw around what we have, but elements and molecules and compounds are completely separate animals. They only need two things. And the second thing being making sure they're in the correct orientation with that. What does that mean? Well, correct orientation means that you can't just bump them up and down and around and around. Just like when you dance, you can't dance back to back. How can you have that? So, to remember orientation, don't dance back to back. Dance facing the right way. And that means you have to dance the right way around. Okay? I hope you guys are with me for collision theory. This is more to give you an understanding of what happens when two things, boom, collide and a new thing is created. So, the factors that affect the rate of reaction. This is the reason we just looked at all of what we just did in the previous slide. So, let's quickly outline how we're going to answer any question that ever comes up on rate of reaction. Well, the first thing you have to do is state the rate of reaction. Well, what would be the first thing that should come to your mind? Well, in this case, it'll be heat. And what that means is that we've increased or decreased the heat of the reaction. So, now we need to build ourselves a framework around how we connect heat to rate of reaction. Well, the first thing we need to remember is that effective collisions are the first and most important part of this whole idea. And we just looked at what are the two things that we need to make sure we remember to ensure that effective collision can happen. And you were right for guessing. Sufficient energy and correct orientation. Well, that's now the sort of framework that we need in place. What are the other factors that affect the rate of reaction? Well, the first is concentration, specifically pressure and volume. Well, we'll get specifically into each of them now, but let's quickly cover the other three. Well, sorry, the other two, specifically surface area and lastly the catalyst. And all four of these are the four main factors that affect the rate of reaction. Well, let's look at concentration first and try and work out how it will improve the rate of reaction. Well, well, let's look at concentration. It doesn't increase the amount of energy in the system, does it? Not really, no. It's just pushing everybody together. On the dance floor, it's just pushing the dancers closer together. That doesn't mean that the people are dancing with more energy. It just means that they're packed in closer together. And the fact that they are now packed in closer together doesn't mean they're in the right orientation. They're still bumping into each other. So what is the missing key here? Well, it's the number of collisions. The closer you are, the more collisions you're going to have. So that's how concentration connects with number of collisions. So let's connect concentration to rate of reaction. Follow me through this in this 
Very interesting way of doing it. Well, the first thing you need to realize, concentration introduces more particles. So that increases the number of collisions, which therefore increases the number of effective collisions and finally increases the rate of reaction. Isn't that simple? Let's quickly look at some of the others that we need to walk through. Surface area. This is the amount of surface area that is one compound can react with another. In this case here, think of a Calci Vita tablet. When you grind it up into a fine powder and you throw it in water, it'll burn up much faster into the water than just if you drop the whole effervescent tablet as it is. So in this case, it does just the same. It doesn't increase the amount of energy. It doesn't fix the correct orientation. It increases the number of collisions, therefore increasing the number of effective collisions and finally increasing the rate of reaction. So now that we've got two out of the way, two more to go. The first is heat. And heat doesn't do anything more than increase the speed, the EK, the kinetic energy. So there's two parts of this. The one part is that it does increase the number of collisions. Because if you think about it, if it's getting hot in the dance floor, people are moving more. They're bumping into each other. That means the number of collisions increase. But before we don't get any further, remember that increases the effective collisions. And with more energy, it also means there's more sufficient energy for people. So the bumps that are occurring have more energy. So the sufficient energy increases as well. <laughs> And there, the effective collision number goes up as well. So heat has a dual purpose. The one side, it increases the number of collisions, but it also increases the number of collisions with sufficient energy, therefore effective collisions. And finally, the rate of reaction increases, therefore, because of heat. So we get to the fourth and final part, the catalyst. This is the most sort of interesting of the four because it, is, it deals with something called the activation energy. This is the amount of energy it requires for a chemical reaction to occur. How much sufficient energy? Is there enough sufficient energy in the course? That is what the activation energy level is. It's the level at which the re reaction will occur. So in this case, the catalyst reduces the amount of sufficient energy. Therefore, any collisions that happened in the past that happened because of too little energy, they now can occur because of the fact that they have enough energy. So, Therefore, we can increase the number of effective collisions. And the final and a little bit more caught out thing, you don't have to remember this one as well, but catalysts also help ensure that the correct orientation is maintained and therefore more effective collisions. So there we have it. Catalysts also increase the rate of reaction. So take a minute just to make sure you have fully encompassed what we've just looked at. Concentration, surface area, heat, and catalysts. And try and picture how each of them increase the rate of reaction. Okay, this is a lot of to take in, but I guarantee you, if any rate of reaction a question comes up in your papers, all you have to do is just take one step, two step, three step, four step. Take heat, for example. You just have to explain you have heat. Therefore, your speed, your sufficient EK is there. So the sufficient energy increases, the number of collisions increases. Therefore, in both cases, the number of effective collisions increases. And finally, you state, because there's more effective collisions, you have a higher rate of reaction. Isn't that easy? So let's quickly round off what we did in this lesson today. The first is collision theory. We have A crashing into B to make C. And then finally, we have factors affecting the rates of reaction. So remember the first one is concentration. The second one, surface area. The third one, heat. And the final one, catalysts. Whoa, isn't that cool? So I'm so glad you guys could join me for this little bit of a lesson on rates of reaction. Good luck for the rest of the guys.